Poison. Okay. The Dirty Truth About Your Food by Hannah Hooper, Rachel Oscar, Molly Harrison. Okay, so the summary of our video was that it was released in 2023. The main issue is a, that was addressed in the documentary is bringing awareness to the large amount of pathogens consumed by Americans co causing them either possible death or hospitalization. These dangers in our food can be found in red meat, romaine lettuce, cantaloupe, sprouts, chicken, in the U.S., 3,000 people are killed yearly due to these deadly pathogens that doesn't count the large amount of people in which are hospitalized as well. So a few of our questions about the documentary is, is organic food and the quality of generic food the same? Uh, are the chemicals in pro procure and agriculture the same in organic and generic produce? and food chemicals or organic food so the first claim as time has gone on organic and non-organic has been the main a big question <clears throat> and which one is seen as more healthy um and which one is the best way to like what's the best way to shop at the grocery stores and um mainly these questions are all based around like when are chemicals used in the growing in the growing the process and then creating the quality over quantity a lot of farmers do not like to take more time and focus on the quantity or quality they like to focus more on how much they can make so then they can make more money and then reducing the price of good produce in which an average person can afford so basically that means changing the price of the organic food and not putting it at such a high point in which the average person would be able to afford that food and then this is my second claim in the progress of producing food and manufacturing goods there tends to be a lot of things in which can go wrong one example is one rotten and infected piece of produce can ruin an entire batch of another example is one diseased cow in which can get mixed up with other cows when making ground beef. This causes people to get very sick and even hospitalization or even worse, death. So with the great amount of money lost in manufacturing when having to get rid of products that are not good, that's like a big deal. And then limiting the amount of fertilization and pesticides in the growing process can help. And then a better screen, um, screening process um, a regular amount of space in which a farm animal are allowed to be near chemicals as well as where the farm animals waste is stored overall the production companies to be need to be more aware of the process and better at scanning for defected things whether that be over chemical or chemicalization and then they need to focus on the quality over the quantity through and through they're leading me to the conclusion that organic and non-organic food is just the same. One is just a st sticker and is marked at a higher price point than the other. Um, For my first claim, I thought about profit versus the ethics of food. Um, What are goals or starting a company? Obviously, like to make money. So there's so many companies out there that they're not really thinking about like what they're doing to make this like um what they're doing basically is to make money it's not for anyone else they really only care about their company um we live in a world that's driven by money and everything kind of evolves around it um and we have healthy factory like running in some countries, but having wealthy factory run food names and brands, we have to take into consideration the amount they're producing for more money rather than the quality. Um, finding places like small far farms, smaller markets, butchers, et cetera, is always a safer option because they are making smaller amounts of food with better quality versus big amounts, worse quality. And then my second claim is health impacts slash geological different countries 
So a lot of things are different countries have different ways of producing their foods. Um, other countries have so much less processed sugar and unhealthy food because government takes more control over who's producing the food and how they sell it. Um, there's always those three, like three ingredient meals, healthy things that you find on YouTube. But like, if you look at those, think about the three ingredients you're putting into them and what are on their labels, because that three ingredient could be turned into 20 really fast. Um, our bodies obviously like adapt to what we consume. And so a thought I had is if young kids at school are eating the high processed lunches, then they're more prone to continue to eat those rather than at a young age, putting in food that will make them feel better. Um, as well as when you're older, not being able to eat food that isn't so awful for you. And then these are some examples of the UK version versus the US version. And they ha that's their ingredient list. And it's tiny compared to the US version. So. And then for my first claim, I asked the question, food chemicals in organic foods and like what chemicals are in organic foods. And overall, I looked up like the definition of organic, which is basically food that has no chemicals in it. So overall, there is no chemicals in organic foods. Um, there is various positives with using chemicals in foods like lengthening shelf life improving tastiness and enhancing color and like look of the food um and speeding the growing process like pesticides and things that like make your produce grow faster and sell faster making more money for the companies um but despite the positives of food chemicals it is becoming ongoing problem and especially in politics is becoming like an ongoing argument and just like a problem overall in the food industry and it seems to cause more health problems than food industry improvements and basically chemicals kind of it makes the food industry improve but only in the way of like fast growing and fast selling and fast making money um, some harmful chemicals that are put into foods is bisphenols, artificial food colors, PFCs, nitrites, and nitrates. And these harmful chemicals can create adverse health effects to developmental, reproductive, and neurological functions. Um, there are a few synthetic chemicals allowed in organic foods, but these are just chemi chemicals in ways of like nature produce, like natural ingredients put into the chemicals. Um, but because there are no preservatives or other harmful chemicals, organic foods have a lower storage life and spoil faster. And organic foods are about 30% more expensive than non-organic, which creates a separation in society with the higher class being able to afford organic foods and stay healthier and the lower class not being able to afford organic foods and having that um, health, like that health problem price. And then my final analysis on this claim is that food chemicals are not in organic produce. The only chemicals are from natural ingredients like pyrethrin made from chrysanthemum plants. Problems like creating a separation in social class are clearly a problem in politics and society, and they're being created from the value of organic food and the price of it. And then my second claim is food mishandling and how that contributes to like health problems and the society separation. Uh, many studies show that mishandling foods in the crops, on the shelf, and during preparation can cause a buildup of bacteria, creating foodborne diseases like salmonella and staphylococcal food poisoning. Um, from 1973 to 1976, disease and mishandled incriminated foods was the top factor of foodborne outbreaks exported, meaning that like problems with putting the food out to the public was creating those diseases and health effects in society. Buildup of bacteria can occur easily, like when having inadequate cooling, being poorly prepared, cross-contaminated, and inadequate thermal process. So a lot of like people in the food industry, like selling food or like a restaurant, they easily can 
create these diseases, causing a, a drift in in food and just overall health. Um, diseases in crops like wheat can be created because of rapid production and rust disease is pathogens created by a change in moisture and temp levels, which we can't really we can't really control the change in moisture and temperature, um, which a lot of it is caused by climate change. And like no one can really stop climate change from happening at this moment. So that's also contributing to diseases. And then my final analysis to improve foodborne diseases is numbers and a focus towards handling food must be made. Clearly mishandling foods is creating an unhealthy food system. So the project summary was after watching the documentary on Netflix called Poisoned, there were many different point of views and arguments made about what is going on currently with the way our food is being processed and distributed along with a list of hazards um, we don't know about. We went over a summary about the history of the documentary, what it was about, and when it came out. There were multiple claims made like health hazards, ethics, and large companies who are producing these foods um, that have underlying issues that aren't normal for people to be consuming. This documentary was extremely eye-opening for what our normalized food industry looks like, especially in America, and how there are many things we could possibly do to try to reconstruct our normalized food intake and how we view our ingredients list. We're excited and yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs> how do I stop? I think you made time. This events. How do I how do I stop?